I cannot sometimes express feelings through the words. I cannot sometimes tell people what I truly feel towards them or inner emotions, but I can express them through the dance, through the movements. And maybe maybe they will not get it, but I'll I would definitely feel relieved. This is unconditioning. Discovering the voice within with Whitney and Jenkins. Hello, and welcome to the second episode of Unconditioning, Discovering the Voice Within, where I bring on guests and we talk about the inner authentic voice and the challenges and the rewards that have come from following it and staying true to the inner self. This week, I have Elisa Garova joining me. She is an international award-winning tribal fusion dancer. She combines techniques from different cultures of the world, including ballet, contemporary styles, Indian and flamenco, and she has millions and millions of views on her YouTube channel videos. Her presentation is mesmerizing and sensual, and her spirit is just so passionate, and her light shines through in everything that she does. Her creative exploration, everything that she touches, just turns into gold. I met Elisa about five years ago in Boston through a mutual friend. And at that time, she was visiting from Ukraine, and she barely spoke any English. And so I'm really impressed with her ability right now, in such a short time, to be able to speak with such profundity. She is a treat, and she's such a burst of sunshine. And so I am so excited for you to meet Miss Elisa Grova. Hello, Elisa. How are you Hi. doing? Hi, Whitney. I I'm doing really great, and I'm so excited to be here with you. <laughs> can, can you tell me how you're feeling? Because I know that you had COVID. I'm feeling wonderful and you know I'm it it can be a little bit funny but I'm really happy that I had COVID because thanks God I had it in a light form but I had to stay at home for two weeks and I had a really deep transformation I realized so many things because no one's uh, no one could could go and visit me I was by myself, sitting at home, I ordered food, and <laughs> I was like, you know, in a long trip in Himalaya, for example, somewhere in mountains. I felt the same thing, I think. I yeah. think I, I felt the same. You had a little retreat for yourself. Yes. And a break from your I'm feeling, routine. yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good. Actually, it was, I had only running nose and a little bit weakness in my body, and then I lost the taste and the smell for three days and I had my test it was positive so but I couldn't tell that I had COVID before I lost my <laughs> taste <laughs> and smell and it was funny it was funny experiments because I, I ate something and I couldn't feel it <laughs> it was really strange it was like eating grass <laughs> interesting was there any fear around having COVID for you or like how did no. you deal with that I think because I had a lot of friends who had COVID already and it's really a hard time in Ukraine for right now and it's not like something that you can surprise someone for right now unfortunately and no, I think I didn't have fear. I just was wondering why did I get it? But I know why, because, you know, I, I actually, I was stressed before. One week before I stressed and, you know, I didn't, you know, I, I let my emotions get over me and I felt like my whole immune system and my spirit fell down and that's when I started to feel something wrong with my body. So it was a good lesson for me just to stay positive and no matter what happening in your life, just you know let it go, be calm and try to be Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's a really positive way to look at it. And the transformations you said that you made during that time, can you talk a little bit more about, about that or is it mostly about staying positive yeah I think uh I would like to talk about it because um I felt the transformation that I started to be more connected with myself 
who am I? Like really me, not some, you know, someone who other people want me to be. Some ex expectations from other people. I felt really, you know, connected with my inner self. And I realized I did something that I don't want to do right now. Mm. I was running after that. It wasn't my dreams. <laughs> it wasn't my dream. And I tried to satisfy someone like, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think that I felt completely happy in this running. And when, when I realized that I'm enough, like I'm good what I'm doing and I'm going to be better and I have to accept myself uh, right now at what step in my life I am, I felt so much better. I felt like I was released from something that really pulled me down. And it was like, no one could help me just it was me myself and no one else and this realization that I tried to fit in this world and I lost myself in this running and <laughs> I was thinking that I was happy I did so many things I tried to be you know good at everything but the question is was I happy did I felt like myself in doing it did I really felt, you know, happiness during this routine or I just did the routine because I want to be good because someone, you know, to impress someone. And I even don't know who I wanted to impress. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And that's really interesting coming from you because me looking at you, you've always mm -hmm. seemed to be super connected to your inner self. And I feel like that's really shined through through all of the work that you do. So I kind of want to go back to the beginning of Elisa. Yes. And talk about when you were little Elisa, when you were yes. a kid and growing up. And talk about when you really discovered that you did have an inner voice inside of you. Mm -hmm. and how that came about for you. I think from very childhood, I was really different from other people, from other, you know, children, because... I didn't feel connected to them. I always was by myself. I I prefer, you know, to be, to play by myself, to stay by myself than to playing with other children. And I it, it, I just, I wasn't mean. I, I felt more comfortable to be with myself. And I was fully satisfied with this. And I always felt that something is bigger inside me and something is guiding me. And I always felt that, that everything is going to be all right, that this inner vo voice is going to guide me through the life. Of course, during the life <laughs> from the childhood <laughs> from to now, till now, I, I always, you know, went the wrong direction. I lost my voice, inner voice. I felt totally depressed. I felt totally, you know, not like myself. And million, million times I found myself and lost again, you know. Yeah. So did you have anyone in your life that encouraged you to follow this inner voice? Like, did you have role models or anyone guiding you to listen to what you were feeling inside of yourself? Mm -hmm. I think I have a few people that are like my rule in spiritual way. Uh, it's my Reiki master from Austria, uh, Elena, and she really helped me to find my inner voice during the harsh time in my life. And but at the same time, I'm feeling like those people they're helping, but they're helping really softly, like they're showing, you know, lightly the direction, and and this is enough. They're not pushing me to do, you know, you're wrong. You have to do this. You have to do this. It's like a light touch of God, I feel, through these people. A gentle nudge. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So your parents growing up, did they also seem to have like an inner voice that they followed? What was that like for you? I think they're totally far from what I'm feeling. I love them so much. I feel they're 
also spiritual people but in their own way because when i they discovered what depression is when i first had it in 14 no i i was 15 i had my first depression really deep depression and they didn't know what to do with me i felt so emotional i felt so bad and they couldn't understand why do i feel this way you know they never thought it could be possible that a person can feel bad because not because of illness but because of the inner you know process and i think they're still discovering many things with me because it's funny they're like more i would say they're more grounded than I am. That's why sometimes I cannot share with them some things because I know they, they wouldn't understand. But at the same time, I'm feeling that each year we're becoming closer, especially in spiritual way, because for right now, my mom believes in Reiki, in Reiki power. And especially, you know, when she had some back pain and I put my hands on her back and she said, oh, oh my God, it works. I didn't know it, like how it works. <laughs> yeah, and for her, it was a big discovery. And I, I noticed that each year they're becoming more open in discussion, like spiritual discussion. But it was a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that your inner voice is attached to your spirituality in a way then? Uh, yes. And at the same time, I'm feeling like I have different voices and I'm trying to be gentle with myself because I, I think I have like kind of Lisa and I have harsh Lisa who expects more of me, who is pushing more. And I think it's a good thing, but everything has to have limits <laughs> because you can put yourself down with your in her harsh voice. Correct. Yes. I, I've experienced that myself. Can you talk about how your inner voice led you to art forms where you are able to express it, mm. such as your dance? How did you discover that dance was a way for you to express yourself? You know, till dance, I think till the day when I started to dance, I didn't have any goals. I was an ordinary girl. Like, yes, I had some talents in drawing, but I think I didn't feel so, you know, spiritual in it. And when I started to dance, I saw my teacher, how she was dancing. And I thought, oh my God, if I could, you know, to feel my body, to express some thoughts through the body, through the dance, like her. I would be the happiest human being in the world. And that's when my journey started. I started to practice and I felt like, you know, I'm, I cannot sometimes express feelings through the world. I cannot sometimes tell people what I truly feel towards them or, you know, my inner emotions, but I can express them through the dance, through the movements and maybe Maybe they will not get it, but I'll, I would definitely feel relieved or they will get some meanings for themselves. You know, everyone's, everyone sees the stories through the dance, through the theater, right? In their own way. It helps in their Correct. own way. But it also helps me, you know, to feel relieved because I think there is not so many people in this world. I, I, I don't think like I thanks God I'm I don't know, I'm I'm meeting I meet these people who are also spiritual, who are very sensible. But I sometimes I'm I'm thinking that it's not like it's it's really hard, you know, it's really hard to live when you're like a very, very, you know, sensitive flower, I would say. <laughs> like you feel all the winds, you feel the sun, you feel the rain, everything. And for me it's sometimes really overwhelming. But dance form and art forms in any way, singing, drawing, it helps me, you know, to put these emotions somewhere. And to, you know, to get away from them, like to, it's right. It's like for me, some kind of relief. 
if I can. <laughs> right. And so in these art forms, especially with dance, there's a lot of technique involved. Yes. And, and structure. And so at what point were you able to kind of have the technique set within you so you didn't have to think about it so you could allow your creative voice to flow through do you understand yes I, mean? I totally yeah. got it but I'm still learning it's a hard <laughs> process you know uh dancing it's not a topic totally not a topic because I can talk about it many hours and my dance journey of course I started to perceive the technique and I lost my spirit in my dance um when I started to pursue uh, more spirituality in my dance I I lost my technique so I'm still balancing I'm still I'm still fighting with this but I'm accepting uh, right now the difference is I'm not I'm like I'm not getting upset but I am just I'm accepting how I dance today so when you feel that your technique is taking over your spirit and being able to express yourself in the dance how do you get back into alignment with your spirit with your your voice i'm trying to switch uh, what i'm doing for example not dancing for a day or you know go for a walk um going to somewhere far away it's a you know a good retreat and you just you know you switch your mind you switch your energy you switch your vibes and it's like you know uh losing yourself in a dance and be more in technique and it's the same thing as losing your inner voice you just you need to find it by yourself no one will help you except you know someone can tell uh for example oh i think you can do better you know you can i mean you can dance from your soul and that's when you have to think oh something is wrong because first of all while we are dancing we are feeling so good right first of all because we are so you know we we have so many emotions so we we want to share these emotions with someone so for me it's like a good it's the first words that i have to remember why did i start to dance because i wanted to feel free to express not because i am like i want to be super like technique dancer yes but you know technique it's not everything right dance. And so in your dance, you're combining a lot of different things with your tribal fusion and mm -hmm. different cultures. So what is it that drives you to explore other cultures and combine them together? I think for right now in my dance journey, I'm so excited to learn more styles of dance. And it's not only tribal fusion, it's also ballet. And I've been dancing ballet for a long time, contemporary ballroom dance and I think from you know from discovering something new in these different dance styles different dance forms I'm feeling like I'm more discovering myself my soul and tribal fusion just you know it's a new style it's fresh and it doesn't have many rules of course it has rules like belly dance technique um different you know arm arms movements from flamenco from Indian dance, but it doesn't have so much, you know, rules uh, as ballet, for example, have. And that's, I think that's why I started to dance tribal fusion, because I'm, I'm feeling like really free there. But at the same time, I'm feeling like I want to explore more, like it's not enough for me. It's not enough space. <laughs> You know what I mean. I do understand what you mean because you have been nonstop in your exploration of all kinds of art forms. Your visual art, your paintings are beautiful and you can really like see the expression of the emotion through them. And also your journey into writing songs and singing. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Because five years ago when I met Elisa in Boston, there was no way that that was even on your radar. <laughs> yes, I, I just like, I'm still like, it's for me the biggest surprise that I, you know, that I could do it by myself. I think the main thing why I did it, I just didn't think that I couldn't do it. Just if right now I'm going to think how I did it, 
I, I, I think I could, I could not write a new song. Just, you know, you have to switch off your mind and just go in the flow. So uh, when I came back from America, back to Ukraine, I, you know, I started to do everything like to just to fulfill my time because I, I didn't want to feel like trauma because it was something unexpected. <laughs> like I was supposed to be in America and everything changed just in a in a heartbeat. And that's why I started to take drawing classes and just ironically, I didn't, you know, I just, you know, my friend told me, oh, there is a good singer coach. You have to go to her. And I was like, singing? No, just, I cannot sing. Like, what are you talking about? And then I started to take classes, singing classes. And then, you know, when you're really into it, when you're not uh, judging yourself and I'm struggling with this, when you're like feeling like it's you, you just, you know, and I lyrics for the songs they just you know started to come out from me and I was like oh wow I have to write it down and especially for me it was surprised that I started to write in English my first lyrics were all in English and I think the reason why because I'm so into you know English American culture and I listen to many songs in English and maybe that's why it started to you know coming out in English and I I think the main thing why I started to do it I didn't think how right. I have to do it because so you were in a in a flow yeah in a flow exactly I didn't think that I don't have no you know a music degree I don't have like I'm not a musician I'm not a good like I'm I'm the beginner in singing and I just didn't think about it and my words just came alive but nowadays you know what I, I just you know during my current time time <laughs> while I was um I, well I I had COVID. I was thinking about my lyric and I actually wrote a text, like not a text, but some thoughts that came out for me because all my real lyrics are almost all of them are sad. I think, yeah. I, I can relate to that, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I was thinking, okay, so they're sad because I felt not really good and I wanted to, you know, express myself to relieve, you know, to feel feel better. But the thing is that when you're putting words into a song or you're putting just a poem, you know, thoughts are really powerful things and words are really powerful things. I started, you know, I realized that everything that I'm putting in the ly lyrics are like coming out in my life. You know, it's like a circle, like I'm spinning around these emotions and spinning around the same situations that I'm singing. And I, you know, I realized I have to, you know, stop and <laughs> just, you know, write my lyrics a little bit more positive. Uh, however, I feel like writing the lyrics that are not so positive are also a way for us to maybe purge express. and mm -hmm. express our emotions that we need to get out yes yes i agree with you but you know nowadays for my where i am right now i'm feeling like i have to change a little bit my style of poems my style of lyrics i'm not you know i'm not talking i'm not telling that i i will never write a uh, you know sad song no it will be in the future but but for right now I'm feeling like I, my new phase of my life is like to pulling myself a little bit up with some bright songs yes and just a few years ago like you spoke barely any English at all <laughs> and now you're writing in English yeah but at the same time I'm feeling like my English <laughs> um <laughs> My English is not as, as good as, as it could be and because I'm not practicing right now and I have no time, but I'm 
it's on my list, you know, to... I, I think you're doing pretty good. I th- I can understand Thank everything you. that you're saying. So, Thank and I, I'm, it's it's Thank inspiring. Because, so, what what is it that drives you? Because you have like a passion, but you also have discipline, and that's not something that should be taken lightly. Because a lot of people struggle with the discipline when they have the passion. Mm-hmm. So you seem to have like a good balance of being able to use your discipline when your passion is lacking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it so helps. How, how do you do that? Can you explain that process a little bit? Yeah, sure. So, you know, when you have passion, you really, it's easy, you know, to do things. But when you don't have, you just need to find the inspiration. You just, you need to keep going. You just, you know, I always remind myself where I'm going to be. Well, th- this really helps me because not to think, why did I start or uh, I have to do it. I just, you know, try to imagine where I'm going to be if I'm going to do this, this or this. And it helps me to, you know, pull myself together and just do things that I have to do because, yes, you you could have some talent for something, but you have to practice. Yes, you could be good at something but at the same time you have to improve yourself all the time and yeah my I think my main tip for for this is just thinking where you're going to be if you're going to take this step today perfect can you talk about anyone that inspires you oh yes I think um for inspiration I'm trying you know I think I would not say that I have one person who inspires me. I have, I think all the people who achieve something, like I can get inspired by, you know, anyone from an artist because he's drawing so well, his paintings are so so good, from a singer, from a common human who struggled with something and overcame it right? Yeah. Um, it can also, I can also take it as an inspiration for me. Uh, different stories from other people. And I think, yeah, so I would say I don't have like one example. I think we all inspire each other every day. I, I believe strongly in that also. I think that everyone's story is very beautiful and and can be transformational if we just allow ourselves to connect to the inner voice, the authentic voice of it, and really tap into, you know, what makes a person a person. Yes. Which seems to be their inner voice that's driving them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, I know. And I'm so thankful to the universe that I, you know, I meet people who have inner voice, who have this spirituality in them because, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy because I see that nowadays more and more people are realizing their inner voice. Yeah, we're waking up. Yes, exactly. I hope so. Yeah. How do you feel about the future? Where do you feel that it's it's leading and going to? As far as like, like if you, if we could like describe the inner voice of the current world right now, like the voice of, of what we're saying. Transition, transition to the next level. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. It's like an exciting time and also a frightening time, but I think the the unknown is where the magic can happen. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. So if you could have a billboard anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. that expresses what your inner voice would say on the billboard? I think, yes, you are enough. (laughs) That's that's a good one. (laughs) Yeah. We are all beautiful. We are all, you know, beautiful souls. And, you know, there is no better or worse. There is no, you know, more beautiful or more spiritual. You are you, you know, you're doing perfect everything and you're perfect at what point you are right now so it's not like you should not punish yourself I think your inner voice have to be calm and you have to be comfortable in your own skin and where you are right now and 
always remember that you are enough in this world. You are enough. You're a human being, first of all. <laughs> I think that we forget that a lot. Yes, We're all the time. Enough. Me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah, many, many people need to hear that they are enough, especially with everything that happens with social media and oh, yes. the constant pressure of, you know, having to compare ourselves yes. to get to a certain exactly. place. So, Elisa, can you give us information about where we can find all of your work? Oh, okay. You can your, find your me. Dan your dancing, your music, everything. Yes, you can find my dance videos on YouTube, Alisa Gurova, A L I S A G U R O V A. And you also can find my work on Instagram. There are some paintings, um, music, and you can find my music, my covers, and my own songs on SoundCloud, Sara Svati. <laughs> okay, can it's, you spell that one for us? Yes, it's. S W A R I S W A T I. It's like um, Indian goddess of R. Oh, of course, yes, the Sarah goddess that, that you are. It totally makes sense. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Whitney. Yes, everyone can find you now, and I highly recommend it because it's some very lovely work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Talking. It's uh, We should talk more often. Definitely. Yes. I think it was really nice to talk to you. And I'm so happy to see you and to hear you and discuss these things with you because it's a rare thing when you can discuss such spiritual things with someone. Yes, I agree. I'm super happy that you entered my life. So Yeah, me too. Me too. And we kept connection from yes. Boston till to this time. To LA, to the Ukraine. Yeah. 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 It's not so far. It's not so far away. Yes. Hopefully exactly. we can travel again soon so we can yes. see each other in person. All right. Much love to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next time. And until then... Stay tuned in to you.